Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to do another example related to quantum theory of measurement. So, this is the example. The complex inner product space, or the state space, is C2. Okay, and we want to consider this basis on C2, the simple basis, a standard basis. And that is an orthonormal basis on C2. All right, now, this, this example is going to illustrate something rather different from the last one. In the last example, it was in dimensions, and we started out by assuming that we had an eigenbasis in, in, uh, in Dirac notation, and we could then compute all sorts of projection operators, spectral form, very easily. But in general, we're not going to be given an eigenbasis for, for when we're given an operator, so we have to deal with that in some way. And this is a simple example showing you how we do that. All right, so on this space, with this basis, we define a self-adjoint linear operator. And the operators are defined by how they act on basis elements. We can look at the matrix representation, and it's clear that the transpose complex conjugate, I mean, everything is real in this case, the coefficients are real, is equal to itself. So it is clearly self-adjoint. Okay, and we can represent that operator A in Dirac notation in the basis ket1, ket2 in this way. But remember, when we want to uh, compute expectation values and probabilities, we need the orthogonal projection onto the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalues. So, we need to compute eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. Now, you guys know how to do this for simple 2 by 2 matrices. You compute the eigenvalues by computing the, uh, the roots of the characteristic polynomial. And in this case, you get lambda 1 equals 6, lambda 2 equals 2. And they're real, which they better be. And we can compute the eigenvalues for each of these, sorry, we can compute the eigenvectors for each of these eigenvalues and normalize them. And the eigenvector, normalized eigenvector, corresponding to lambda 1 equals 6 is this. And the normalized eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 equals 2 is this vector. Okay, now here's the part that uh, I want you to pay close attention to from this point on. All we've done now is compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors but for 2 by 2 matrices. But what you're going to want to do is relate the eigenvectors in, I, in, in the, to the original basis. So you want to change basis. Why do you want to do that? And you'll see this in a second. But you know, when you had linear algebra, you learned about change of basis, and you probably learned it in dimensions, and it was a lot of indices and so on. But in this case, it's very simple. You can do it in your head in these two-by-two two examples. E1, remember what um, the matrix, the cat 1 is one column vector 1, 0. Cat 2 is column vector 0, 1. You can easily check that um, cat E1 is equal to this expression, and ket e2 is equal to this expression. So check this yourself carefully and make sure you understand how I go between these two. Okay? So we can write A also in spectral representation in Dirac form in this way. It's the eigenvalue, 6 and 2, multiplying the ket bra combination um, related to the corresponding, corresponding to the uh, eigenvectors for the eigenvalues. All right, 
Good. Now we can also, here's a check. Remember I wrote A above in, uh, spec in uh, direct notation in the 1, 2 basis. Okay. The highlighted line here represents A in the um, eigenket basis. Well, we can write E1 and E2 in terms of um, ket1 and ket2, the other basis, and we do that. And uh, this is a good exercise for computing conjugates of kets and getting bras and so on. But if you go through this calculation, you will end up with exactly this expression above. Okay. Now, I want you to do that calculation just to check me on this. This is important. Um, this, is, this is an important calculation to do because it, uh, if you're doing it correctly, indi indicates that you have these concepts down quite well. Okay. Suppose the system is in the state 1, ket 1, not an eigenstate. Okay, that's the dif difference with the previous e um, example. What is the probability of measuring lambda equals 6 in the state 1? Okay, we know if we make a measurement in a given state, it's going to be an eigenvalue. That state doesn't have to be an eigenstate. Well, it's this expression right here. Okay, so the probability, the, proje the orthogonal projection operator onto the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 1 is given by this ket bra combination. Now we see the issue. How do you compute the uh, bracket of, of um, bra 1 with ket 1 and bra e1 with ket 1? Didn't quite say that right, did I? But, you, um, but, but it's written down correctly. Anyway, so you have to, you, you've mixed <coughs> bras and kets between <coughs> excuse me, two different bases here. But the calculation has to be done in the same basis. Pick your favorite. So pick e, um, ket E1, ket E2, write down their expressions in terms of the basis ket1, ket2, and you can do this calculation, and you get the probability for computing lambda equals 6 in the state ket1 is a half. Okay, and you can also, and similarly, compute the probability of computing the other eigenvalue. The outcome is always going to be an eigenvalue in the sta same state, ket one. You need to change between the eigenbasis and this. Alternatively, you could write um, bra one cat 1 in E1, E2 notation. If you really want to practice, and I hope you do, try it, try calculating it that way. But you're going to get a half. So the probabilities add up to 1, as they should. Now let's look at expectation values. Suppose we want to compute the expectation value of A, that's our operator, self-adjoint operator, in the state 1. Well, that's the general notation we've adopted. And here you have bra 1, cat 1 with A in the middle. Okay, well now you can just write down the uh, spectral representation for A as we re rewrote it earlier in the um, uh, cat 1, cat 2 basis. And if you work this out, and I urge you to, you're going to get 4. Okay, <clears throat> so now why don't we compute the dispersion of A in the state 1. Okay, we need to compute what? We need to compute the expectation value of A squared minus expectation value of, of A squ quantity squared and then take the square root of it. 
Okay, we've just computed the expectation value of A, and we can square it. But now to compute this, we got to do some algebra. Not too bad. Compute A squared, write down the uh, expression in Dirac notation. It's a little bit involved. Compute the expectation value, you put it all together, and you get 2. Okay, so what does it mean? This is an example of how to compute this. We're going to look at these this concept of dispersion in some detail in physically relevant settings when we look at uncertainty later on in this chapter. Okay, so suppose we measure A in the state 1 and the outcome is 6. Got to be an eigenvalue. What is the state after measurement? Okay, take the orthogonal projector onto the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 6. Let it act on the state in which the measurement is made. Normalize it and you get E1. So the state starts off in ket1. You measure the eigenvalue corresponding to the um, to lambda equals 6 with eigenvector ket E1 and that's what you get after measurement. Now we want to look at a phenomena in the context of this example that is very particular to quantum mechanics. And this is a very intriguing um, phenomenon called interference. Suppose we measure A in the state psi. Okay? Suppose psi is 1, ket 1. Okay, we know already that the probability of measuring lambda equals 6 in that state is a half. We've already computed that. Okay. Now if we consider the state ket psi equals ket 2, what is the probability that we'll measure lambda equals 6 in that state? Well, we just do the calculation we're also going to get a half. Interesting. Okay. Now let's look at a different state in which we're going to make a measurement. Ket psi is a linear combination of ket1 and ket2 that's normalized. Okay, a linear superposition of ket1 and ket2 that's normalized. So what would be the super... The <laughs> What would be the uh, probability of measuring lambda equals 6 in this state? Well, that's the, no the formula. Okay. Go through the calculation. Important that you do that. It's great practice. Zero. The answer is zero. That's weird. It, no, it's not weird. Well, it's weird, but it's not weird. <laughs> okay. So... Curiously, if you measure it in one state, in, in just one of the states, you get probability 1. In the other state, you, you, um, you get probability, probably, probability half. The other state, probability half. You add them together, and you get 0. Okay, so this is, illustrates the idea that you know, probabilities don't add, and you have this destructive interference between the states in some sense, which is very much indicative of wave-like phenomena. Okay, but let's look at a different state. Ket1 plus, not quite Ket2, but Ket2 with a phase factor, e to the i theta, for some real number theta, divided by root 2. Now, if we compute the probability to measure lambda equals 6 in this state, what do you think we're going to get? Do the calculation. You know, I say that a lot, do the calculation, but it settles arguments to do, <laughs> to do a correct calculation. So what you're going to get is 1 minus cosine theta over 2, which is interesting because it tells you that the relative phase between two different states is something that can be measured, 
But if I had an overall multiplicative phase factor, that doesn't change the state from the point of view of measurement. And you can check that. OK, a lot of interesting things here, a lot of simple calculations that you really need to go back and do yourself and check. Make sure I didn't make a, 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 an error in my calculations. The formula are all correct, but you can all, always make an algebraic error. So we're going to stop here for this example. And next time, we're going to pick up with this notion of unitary operators and time evolution in quantum mechanics. And that is a really important concept. So until next time, see you. Bye.